Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Today's video is my September reading wrap up and I have a lot of books to get through. Here's hoping I <laughs> remember all the details enough to talk about them. I did actually go over all of my books like I do every time to like refresh my memory, but one of my problems with reading this many books in a month is that I inevitably forget some details and I don't like that. That's why I love vlogging because I can tell you my in the moment thoughts and reactions because pretty soon after a little while my brain goes poof and they're gone. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. 19 books. I had one DNF, so 20 are on my list, but one of them was a DNF. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first book that I read is The Goblin Emperor. This is an adult fantasy book. This features Maya, our main character, who is half elf and half goblin, and he is recently inherited the throne. He is the last remaining descendant of the king, and he has had nothing to do with the court his entire life, and so he is suddenly thrust into the center of heavy court politics, and he finds people who are coming up trying to be a little bit sycophantic and like suck up to him and get on his good side and and he's having a really hard time discerning like who is genuine and who isn't along with all these other political threads and machinations that are happening. So this is a very very quiet character driven book and it is one of my favorite things. I loved this book. I gave it five stars. I thought it was fantastic. If you're looking for a lot of plot, if you're looking for a lot of interesting, crazy, different, unique, whatever adjective you want to use to describe world building, or magic, you're not going to find that here. This isn't a very realistic type of setting that is a imagined setting, a fantasy world with goblins and elves and creatures like that, but it's not heavily fantastical as in there's not magic or there's not crazy world building. But the court politics, if that's something that you really, really like, and especially if you like subtle court politics, you will love this book. If you really love an empathetic character who is trying to do his best and really is has like this heart of gold and he's really trying to figure out where he fits in and what he's supposed to do in this world and this new role, you will love this. I adored this. I loved Maya as a character. I thought he was fantastic. I loved seeing him try and figure things out. And I think one of the good things that this book has is that because Maya himself is new to the court and the world, we also get to learn through his eyes. And I think that's a very effective way to introduce world building. I loved it. I loved it very much. One of my favorite aspects of this was the writing style, which was so, so carefully cultivated and restrained. Every single word in this book counts. Like she is using words with a lot of intent and a lot of purpose, even to the point that what she puts down on maybe page like 15, you don't see the effect of that until those words on the line, on the line, the prose, you don't see the effect of that for maybe pages or pages later. Like her prose is understated, but it has such an impact. I loved this book. I can't wait to read more from this author. I thought it was fantastic. Okay, and the next book that I read is The Wraith King by Juliet Cross. This is an arc that I received, and I actually did a beta reading of this book for Juliet, so I am pretty emotionally invested in this overall. I still did give this six stars. I think that the finished version is spectacular. This is everything that I love in a fantasy romance where we have sort of starts out as antagonistic to lovers' enemies, essentially they're enemies to lovers, but they have an initial first meeting in a prison where, uh, I'm not going to reveal what happens there, but they meet in prison, and she she is really fearing for her life. She is the Light Fae Princess, and he is the Wraith King of the Dark Fae. And they meet in this prison, and that's what sort of is the catalyst for their entire relationship. Because when King Gaul, the Wraith King, sees her, he feels like there is something about her that is made just for him. And there is a prophecy regarding his people that if he finds the Light Princess or whoever, that she will be the one that is going to bring peace to the kingdom. So these two kingdoms have been warring for a very, very long time. The Light Fae have suffered major casualties because of this feuding that they have had going on. And so eventually years later after they after the prison meeting is over and they're in their own kingdoms and they're still at war king gall tries to broker an alliance with their people and he says that the only way that they will stop warring with them is if he can have una princess una who he met in the prison as his bride and she agrees not exactly willingly i mean she agrees because she knows it's best for her people but she's not excited about it at all 
And thus begins this journey the two of them go on as they're trying to get to know one another, another as she is not sure if she can trust him and as he is really trying to keep himself restrained from falling in love with her right away. He's such a beautiful alpha mellow hero, which is all the best characteristics of an alpha hero and a cinnamon roll hero. And I just loved watching their slow descent into love. I loved the world. I loved everything about this book. I thought it was fantastic. And it's probably, it is my favorite fantasy romance that I've read this year. Okay, the next book that I read is Wild Eyes by Elsie Silver. This is a contemporary romance, cowboy romance. I adored this book. I I have had kind of a hit or miss past with Elsie, some of her previous books, but this new series is really hitting for me. And this one especially, this is probably my new all-time favorite Elsie book. I loved it so much. This has our hero West, who is a horse trainer. He is a divorced single dad, so he has two kids of his own. He's very dedicated to his kids and to his business as a horse trainer, and he is just a fantastic hero. He stumbles upon our heroine one day when she is out there trying to get a video of herself with a grizzly bear and he is like, what is this idiot doing out there? And he tries to stop her and she's like, no, this is fine, I want the content. And uh, he eventually gets her talked down from the grizzly bear meeting. And it's a, it's kind of this meet cute that is interesting, but it also kind of had me thinking, is this going to be a heroine that I absolutely hate? Because it sounded like she was a rich, privileged city girl. And I was just like, I don't want to read about her, you know? But Elsie really did a great job with her character. I don't feel like she was ever one note. I don't feel like she was ever stereotypical. She really built her up beautifully to keep her three-dimensional and flawed and having a lot of qualities about her that are very relatable regardless of whether you are a pop star or a country star which is what the heroine is like she's very easy to relate to and I really enjoyed her as a character a lot I loved their romance she this heroine is a country singer star kind of like Taylor Swift and she ends up in this city because she's working on a record deal with the hero from the first book so that's how West and her kind of meet in forced proximity and then of course she ends up having to move into his house house and, you know, things happen from there. So I just loved it. I felt like this romance was so beautifully developed. I felt like it took its time. It didn't feel rushed. It didn't feel like she was dropping balls and just trying to get straight to the nitty gritty of the romance. Like I adored the buildup of this romance. And that's something that really matters to me with my romance books. I need there to be a good, convincing, solid buildup. And obviously that's going to be different for everybody, what they want in a romance. But this completely delivered. This was a six star read for me. I loved it. Okay, and the next book that I read is a reread for me. I read The Making of Highlander by Elisa Braden. This was the book that my book club picked on Fable, most ardently is a historical romance book club I run on Fable. It is free to join, free to participate. The link is down below if you ever want to join. This was the book that we picked for September, and this was a reread for me. I do like Elisa Braden a lot. I had previously given this book five stars. Unfortunately, I didn't enjoy it quite as much upon reread, although there was still a lot to really enjoy, but I did bump it down to a four star rating. So this is about our heroine, who is a very feisty Scottish woman. She's very independent. She is just feisty as all get out. She's very lovable. She's very endearing. She's a great heroine. She's probably the best thing about this book, honestly. And then we have our hero, who she calls English, who is an Englishman who has come to the town. He's trying to get the land from Annie's father. And uh, Annie's father says that the only way he's going to relinquish the land to English is if he competes in the Scottish trials and wins. And of course, our hero has no idea how to do that. And our heroine, Annie, she needs to marry a lord for some mystical, almost paranormal reasons involving a spirit boy who she has really grown close to. And so she makes a deal with him that if he helps her become marriageable to find an English lord, she will help him to be able to compete in these games. And then they're thrown into forced proximity and they fall in love, obviously. I did feel like this one leaned a little bit too hard into our hero appreciating our heroine pretty much only for her body and her cooking. And I don't think that is entirely true. I'm being a little bit ungenerous there, but I just really dislike it when our heroes, the, the things that he first notices about her or the things that are most important to him about her are the way she looks, her body, what he imagines doing with her body, and that she's a good cook. Like, I just don't like my romance heroes to be like that. I don't want them to... I, I don't like that, right? So that's really the main reason that I knocked it down to a four star because that's just something that I just don't have any tolerance for these days. And it did, it, the romance does develop really beautifully, but that just, it just kind of left a sour taste in my mouth through the whole reading experience. So four stars. 
Okay, so now the next two books are part of a series. So the first one I read is Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. This is a contemporary cowboy romance. Again, I really was on a cowboy romance streak. I was having a great time. I was having a great time. This was so fun. I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. And this is basically about our heroine who grew up on a ranch and she was part of a working ranch as this family. She was a successful horse rider. She ended up, leave, ended up leaving home to try and start her own career and live her own life as a barrel racer and a horse trainer. She was involved in a really tragic accident uh, that traumatized her deeply, a horseback riding accident, and she can no longer compete. So she comes, ends up coming back home where she meets her brother's best friend who now owns and operates this bar and he's a cowboy himself. And the two of them fall in love. So it's their romance. I really loved this book. I think that it had did a pretty good job of balancing the elements of heavy content with her traumatic accident and the hero himself has some emotional baggage as well with adding a lot of levity and humor and just like fun times to the reading. I think the balance overall was pretty good. I do feel like this book was just a little bit too short that the heavy topics in here weren't really given enough page time. I feel like I wish they had been addressed a little bit more. So that's really the only reason I gave it four stars instead of five stars because it was a very fun read and I really enjoyed this author's writing style. So the next book is book two which is Swift and Saddled, another cowboy romance set in the same ranch, set in the same world. I really enjoyed this one. I like this one a little bit less than book one, but I still gave it four stars. And this one is about our heroine who is really kind of dealing with some emotions of a divorce. Her husband has left her. She's very emotionally damaged by that and the circumstances regarding why he left. And she ends up in this small town. She's been hired to be a designer for some renovations at the ranch house. She ends up at the bar, of course, where everybody ends up meeting. And she sees this very attractive cowboy. They lock eyes. They have this kismet, this connection, this chemistry. And they have this very passionate first kiss in the hallway. They're interrupted and separated. And then she sort of has this awakening of, oh my gosh, what did I just do? I shouldn't have done that. The next day, she goes to the ranch and realizes that he is actually the son of the ranch owner, and he's who she's going to be working with to work on all of these renovations. So they're thrown into forced proximity with all of this chemistry and tension between them and the memory of their shared kiss, and they fall in love. I feel like their falling in love in here was so soft and sweet and very beautiful. I feel like both of these books are quite steamy, steamier than I personally really enjoy, but I still had a great time with these romances. I think they overall are just so fun, very escapist, very easy to get into, very engaging. I like them a whole lot. Four stars for both of them. Okay, now the next book was a standout read for me of the month. It is In the Details by Julia Wolfe. This is a contemporary romance. This author is pretty new to me. I've only read one of her other books before. Um, P.S. You're Intolerable, which I loved. Gave that one five stars. This one was a five star read for me and I really enjoyed this. I think that this author, what I've noticed, at least in the two books of hers that I've read, is that she does an excellent job of creating a hero who absolutely worships the heroine. Like 100% obsessed with her, worships her, loves her and adores her, and is constantly just like giving her words of affirmation. And his actions show that he is 100% there for her. Like this is a man that literally, this is like dream stuff, right? Like he is a perfect, perfect man. But you know, obviously not entirely perfect, but pretty dang, pretty dang close if we're being honest. Like this, this guy was pretty dang close. So this book opens with a one night stand. We have Cora, our heroine, and Jake, our hero. They end up at a biker club. He's a biker, she is there riding on a bike as well. And uh, they have a one night stand and they end up having these meetings of one night stands several times over the course of months or I'm not exactly sure how long. And then one day, Cora, who, you know, by day is a very, very successful businesswoman, she ends up meeting Jake at her business because his company is trying to work a deal with hers, which is like this big motorcycle company. And uh, she is kind of awestruck at seeing him in person in the daylight, and he is as well. And he pursues her and tries to get her to date him and to take him seriously. They are both single parents. She is the mother of like a three-year-old daughter, and he is the, the father of a daughter as well. And I just feel like the blend of the single parents, both of them being single parents in here, and the way that they had to set up, you know, Cora is very, very tentative when it comes to trusting Jake, and she really takes her time. She doesn't fall into love with him very easily. And it was just so lovely watching him just 100% try to earn her trust. And it was beautiful. I loved this book. I thought it was very sweet and very romantic. And I mean, if, if you're looking for a romance that 
feels very romantic and has just like the hero who literally worships the ground the heroine walks on, you have to read this book. It's just perfect. And it was also filled with just very small, intimate moments of them talking and getting to know one another and sort of revealing things that they weren't sure if they wanted to, like a shared intimacy in that way. It was really lovely. I enjoyed it a lot. Okay, the next book that I read is Alive and Wells. This is another cowboy romance that I gave five stars. This one was fantastic. So this one has a little bit of a heavier theme because our heroine is in an abusive marriage when the book opens. Her husband is extremely mentally and verbally abusive and she is just living in fear the entire time of her life with this man. And she's trying to work up the courage to leave him actually. And one night the abuse escalates into physical violence and that is when she takes it seriously and she leaves and escapes that night. She's been in communication with a woman who helps survivors of domestic violence at this ranch and has a job offer waiting for her. So she goes across the country, I believe, to this ranch to get a job. And that's where she meets the rancher of the, the owner of the ranch himself. And he's not exactly excited that she's there because she's very much a city girl. She doesn't really know how to work on a ranch. And uh, even though she's going to be doing like the women's stuff, like the cooking and the cleaning and providing for the ranch hands and stuff like that, he's not exactly excited that she's there because he doesn't think that she's confident for the job, but he also sees that she is stunningly beautiful and he is sure she's going to cause a ruckus with his men, right? And that is is our couple who falls in love. And watching these two fall in love was so beautiful. I particularly liked the parts of being in the hero's head because I think that the way he thought about the heroine was very realistic in the way that he was very physically attracted to her, but he also was so good at noticing details about her that spoke to who she is, what she's been through, what he admired about her. I just really loved being in the perspective of him specifically when he thought about the heroine. I loved this romance. I think it was very beautiful. I, I, I had a lot to say about this in my reading vlog. I vlogged about it. It was a great one. Five stars. This one that I read was a DNF and it is a Tempest of Tea. This is a YA fantasy about a tea shop that sort of caters to vampires where they can come and feed there. There are some circumstances that are involving the tea shop and the tea shop owner where she may lose her business and so they go on like this heist to try and save it. Magical creatures. But man, I, I tried to read this book twice and I just struggled like getting invested into it. And I've determined that it is the author's writing style, which is very, very heavily reliant on literally telling you everything that is happening. There's so, it's not that there's not show in here because she does show you things that are happening. There are scenes that show you what's happening, but then she will be extremely redundant and tell you, like recap for you things that happen. And I just, I found this writing style to be just painfully boring, tedious. I did not care about all the details she was including and I wasn't getting enough of our characters or what was actually happening with the plot. And I just was like, finally like, okay, DNF, I can't read this anymore. I'm so freaking tired of reading this writing style. I can't take it anymore. So the next book I read is The Pumpkin Spice Cafe. This is a cozy romance mystery, something like that. Um, I didn't hate this. I gave it three stars, but I feel like this, this one really suffered from the hype. I feel like this book is so hyped right now and it's not a bad book at all. I just feel like this book was trying to do too many things and wasn't doing anything any of them particularly well, right? So we have this small town romance. Our heroine inherits this pumpkin spice cafe shop. She's trying to make it a business. She's just left her corporate girly job because she saw her boss die from stress on the job and she wants to like live a full life. So she comes into this small town. And then we have our hero who is the cinnamon rollist of cinnamon roll heroes. And he is kind of like helping her with some things around the, the cafe. And he has a little bit of a damaged past and he's really not looking, he has a hard time trusting. He falls in love very easily. And that's the romance between the two of them. And I just feel like the romance itself didn't really work for me. And that was probably the biggest detractor because he had a lot of trust issues and she didn't really communicate very well. And it just seemed like there was not enough forward momentum to get me to buy into the romance. And there wasn't enough like emotional stuff happening. There were some spicy scenes thrown in, which just did an absolutely nothing for it. And the mystery was just so completely obvious and wasn't really mysterious. So I don't know, this book had good vibes for fall, but the story was very weak. So three stars. Okay, the next book that I read is Here With Me by Brooke Montgomery. This is another contemporary romance, cowboy romance, and this was the last one, I promise. This one I struggled with. I gave this one three stars. This is an age gap, ex-boyfriend's dad romance, basically. And I really struggled with the disparity between our very mature reading hero, who's like 44, 
and our very immature reading heroine who is like 22. And I just, I just really have a hard time with that big of an age gap in general. And if the author isn't doing some serious emotional work to get me convinced that these two see each other on a soul level and not just on a physical level, I'm out. Like, I can't do that. I do not want to read about a nothing but spicy times between a much older man and a much younger woman. Like, I don't want to read about that. I find that just yucky and gross and bleh. and I know I'm the odd one out because that's a very popular trope but that's my main problem with this is that there wasn't enough emotional intimacy between these two to justify the extreme amount of physical lust driven romance that was driving this couple. I just didn't, there, I just could not suspend my disbelief because every interaction they had was either about their physical relationship or about them thinking about their physical relationship and there was literally nothing else as far as I could see. So I just have a hard time believing that this much of an age gap is anything other than icky on the part of the hero when it is almost entirely, all, like 99% entirely driven by lust. I don't like it. I'm out three stars. And I feel like that's being generous. I feel like it's being generous because, you know, star ratings are personal, they're subjective, and this is 100% not my cup of tea at all. So I feel like I gave it three stars because I don't think it's a bad book, but it is certainly not a crystal book. So next I read Rain and Ruin. So this is a fantasy romance that is kind of taking TikTok by storm. A couple of my friends were reading it and absolutely loving it, and I wanted to see what it was about. I had the audiobook, and I dove right in. So this is a case where I feel like this is mislabeled. I don't feel like this is fantasy romance. I don't feel like this is romanticy. This is fantasy with a romantic subplot, because if you take the romance out of this book, the plot exists whole on its own. You could read this without the romance, and I feel like that is not a fantasy romance. They have to be intertwined. They have to be interconnected. They have to be even, right? It can't just be all fantasy with just a little bit of romance that, if taken away, the story still stands on its own. Like, no, that's not a fantasy romance in my opinion, okay? So this has a really beautifully built fantasy world. It's based in Middle Eastern history, Middle Eastern mythology. And I really like the magic system of mages, like death mages, light mages. I thought that was interesting. I liked our main character well enough. She's a heroine. She is caring for her elderly father who is losing his mental faculties and he is the sultan and she's trying to take his place and not just be a bride of the man who will take his place. And the court is trying to just marry her off. They don't want a woman leader. And our hero is from a neighboring kingdom where they're kind of a little bit of skirmishing together. And they decide to work, try to work on an alliance by being together, right? By working together. And I also just feel like the romance in here was very hastily developed. I didn't feel like enough attention was given to moments showing our couple falling in love. There was a lot of reductive moments of them just admiring the beauty of one another. And then it was like, oh, I love them. And, and that to me reads as a YA romance because that is so common in YA romance where it's just like, love at first sight is so beautiful. I love them, you know, and that's exactly what it felt like here. So I don't think this is a bad book at all. I think that it was really well written. I think that the plot was pretty solid. The characters were good, but the romance was pretty weak. So three stars. Next book that I read is An Arc. This is another fantasy romance, and this one is The Red Woman and the White Bear. So this one is a debut fantasy romance author, and I was very impressed with this. I think the writing in this is very strong. I think she has a really beautiful writing style that does tend to lean into a little bit of over description, as in not that the words are flowery or there's too many like adjectives or whatever, just that she d she has this habit in this book specifically. I, I mean, the only one of hers I've read, it's a debut. So I'm not sure if she's going to, I'm sure she'll improve. Anyway, anyway, anyway she has this way of setting a scene and telling you a lot of details of things that the characters are noticing that aren't really necessary to either character development or plot, but it does set you firmly in the world, which just adds length to the book, which I feel like is kind of unnecessary. But that's my one criticism about it. I will say this has a very unique setup. This has a really good romance and this has a really beautiful fantasy world. So this is sort of an urban type of fantasy where we're set solidly in the human world. Our heroine has has been hearing about the Fae from her mother who was kind of obsessed with them for years and years and years. She ends up one day sort of thrust into that Fae world when she uh, then finds out that she's involved in a prophecy which calls her the Red Woman and the White Bear, which is her Great Pyrenees dog, Briar. And basically they're saying that she is the one who's going to be responsible for bringing the Unseelie Kingdom to its knees and they will not be in power anymore. 
she ends up being taken by the Unseelie King to his kingdom, and that's where she starts to learn and realize that maybe what she thought about the Seelie Kingdom and the Unseelie Kingdom is not actually accurate, that maybe there isn't an evil kingdom here after all, and things don't seem as they appear. They're not really as they appear. And I really, really love the interaction between our hero and our heroine. I think that this is such a fun dynamic, and I really enjoyed this and I gave it five stars and I think this is an author to watch. I really, really do. This was really a solid debut. Like, more than solid. This was, this was pretty exceptional, honestly. Okay, and then I read How to Marry a Marquis uh, by Julia Quinn. I really enjoyed this. This was so fun, so heartwarming, just delightful. This was recommended to me by a, one of my patrons, Jennifer, and I adored this book. I think this was just such a sparkling breath of fresh air in historical romance, and it was exactly what I needed, and I loved it. So our basic premise is we have our heroine who is, she's an orphan, her parents have died, and she is working as a, a companion to Lady Danbury in this book. And our heroine has recently realized that she has to marry because she has no way of financially supporting her her sis siblings and they're in dire financial straits and so she goes on a hunt to to find a titled man to marry so she can have a fortune and while she's perusing the library in Lady Danbury's home she finds a book that says how to marry a marquee she takes it out and uh, that sort of becomes a little bit of a joke as people try to see what she's reading and what's going on and it's just very very fun now Lady Danbury nephew, who is a titled man, comes to Lady Danbury because she has requested his help, but he's there under the guise of an estate manager, so our heroine doesn't know that he is actually a titled man, a lord, and he finds out she's got this book, and he's like, hey, why don't you practice that on me, and we'll see if we can get you how to marry a marquis. So they fall in love. This is so cute, so charming, so fun. Like, I just had the best time reading it. I was smiling the whole time. It was just a great one. I adored it. A really solid, fun historical romance that was really sweet and romantic too. Okay, and then I reread The Madness of Lordy and Mackenzie for Patreon. This was our Patreon book club for September. Uh, I have read this book before. My original vlog is like the first vlog on my channel when I was reading this. I love this book. It's fantastic. I have an exclusive reading vlog for this and the next book I'm going to mention on Patreon for the So Delicious tier, so I'm going to just leave it at that. The next book that I read is a fantastic historical romance that was recommended to me by Linda, who is also a patron, and it is Darius by Grace Burroughs. So this is the first Grace Burroughs book that I have ever read, and wow, I was very impressed with this. I gave this book six stars. I go into a lot of detail of this book in the reading vlog on Patreon, but this just wowed me on every level. And I think specifically because the setup in here is something that I've read before, and I thought I knew where she was headed with this, right? So we basically have our heroine, who is the young wife of a I don't exactly remember his title, if he's a duke or what, but she's a lady, and our aged husband cannot get her with child, and uh, they don't really have that type of relationship, right? He was married before, deeply in love with his wife, now he's got this young wife, and he realizes that his, his time in this world is not much longer, and he wants her to have a child. So he hires Darius, who has sort of put himself into the role of prostitution, as necessity has dictated, because, you know, he has his brother who is a grieving widow and his sister who's sort of been affected by scandal and he's trying to financially support them. So he's essentially prostituted himself to take care of his family. And so he is hired basically for his stallion services for our heroine and they end up um, in a, one month together to try and get her pregnant. And most of their falling in love or starting to fall in love is in that one, one month, so it's very physically driven, which is something that I typically don't like. But this author really handled this book with so much nuance and care, and the way that she developed Darius's character was incredible. This is one of the best historical romances that I have read that focuses so solidly on the hero and his journey. I've never read anything like this before. He is filled with so many conflicting emotions, and in a way he feels a little bit of powerless because of the prostitution that he has sort of let himself get into or or he has done to save his family. And it's interesting to see that on a male character because I feel like that's pretty common with women in historical romances, right? So I just, I loved their romance. I loved the slow way that they fell in love together. I loved the side characters who I also hated. Like, this is a historical romance that has so much complexity and layers and depth to these characters and the romance itself that 
I was a little shell-shocked. So this was six stars. This was fantastic. I loved and adored it. And I absolutely love when an author can take something that I don't like usually and show me a new way of telling that story that gets me fully on board with it. Like I loved the characters in here. I loved everything about this. I thought this was excellent. Six stars. And then I read The Curse of the Siren, which is another arc, a debut fantasy romance, and I enjoyed this one. This one was fun. This one is um, basically about our heroine who ends up in a burglary that has gone wrong. She's half fae, and she ends up hit by a rogue arrow, and her companion, companion who's sort of like her partner in crime, Eowyn, I believe, um, he sees that she's been hit and they try to heal her and that's when it's revealed that she has siren powers which are not exactly appreciated at this time like they're considered very dangerous they are something you don't want and so she's worried that she's maybe cursed because she has siren powers which she didn't know that she had so Eowyn and our heroine they end up taking on this job this heist job that is very dangerous but will be very lucrative for the two of them and that puts them solidly in the Fey realms. And that's when they run up against this merciless vampire lord who is used to getting everything that he desires. He's not used to being told no, and he wants our heroine desperately. So there's a little bit of a love triangle in here. This is very fast paced. This is very um, plot forward type of fantasy romance. And it was really fun. It was very engaging. It read very quickly. The writing style definitely felt underdeveloped, which is largely why I gave this four out of five stars. Um, but it was fun. It was fun. If you're looking for something that has those elements in a fantasy romance, I would recommend this for sure. And I definitely would read more from this author in the future. Okay, the next book that I read is The Spell Shop. <laughs> I absolutely loved this and I was so surprised because cozy fantasies typically don't work for me. So this is pitched as a cozy romanticy. So there is a romance element in here too, which which could have been why I liked it better because cozy fantasy alone doesn't really do it for me. But when you add a romance in there, I'm interested. I think a lot of times romances can feel cozy, especially if you read one that has low stakes, low angst, it's just a sweet romance. And that's really what this one felt like. So the appeal to me for this book was 100 100% the setting, the vibes, the characters, the writing style. I just loved it. I thought it was so fun. This was just not, I don't know what I was expecting. I went into this with low expectations because I typically don't expect cozy books to work for me because I like a good amount of angst. I like a good amount of drama. I like a good amount of darker themes or things that our characters have to really work through. And I was really surprised at how invested I was right away in these characters' lives and how much I loved them. So we have our heroine who is working in a library. She's a librarian. She's very antisocial, very introverted, and she has this sentient spider plant, and he is so adorable. I loved him so much. He was a great character. And they end up having to evacuate this library because it's on fire and everything is burning down. And so they end up going back to her childhood home and her parents have passed away. There's some sad circumstances that happened there. And that's when she decides she's going to try and use her spells to sell jam that her parents had from a fruit tree there, fruit that her parents had from trees. And that's how she's gonna make a living and make a new life for herself there. And this was just great. The romance was sweet. It wasn't, the, it wasn't like the best romance I've ever read, but it was sweet, it was fun. But I just loved these characters. I loved the magical creatures in here. We have like seahorses, we have centaurs, we have another talking cactus, which is adorable. There are mermaids. This was just so wonderful. I loved it. And this is going to be a comfort read for me for sure. And I think that I will revisit this anytime I feel like I just need something comforting and cozy because I just had a great time reading this. It was so fun. I loved it. And then the next book that I read is The House at Watch Hill by Karen Marie Moaning. This is the beginning of a new series of hers that is urban fantasy. And I loved this. And I wasn't entirely sure if I would, especially in the beginning. I gave this five stars. This is basically about our heroine who is really down on her luck. She's very much struggling financially. She's living with her mom who is dying of cancer and they are living pretty much in destitution. Like they don't have a lot of money. They've got a ton of bills. She's really struggling to make ends meet. And she's struggling to be able to spend some time with her mom before she passes away because she knows she doesn't have much time here then something tragic happens where their apartment, the home they're renting, is burned to the ground with her mother inside. And so she's left to grieve her mother and try to move on with her life. And I will say that this book is heavy with the theme of grief, of losing a parent, of losing your mother. 
and I really wasn't super prepared for that and that was the thing that really kind of slowed me down on this because I, I don't really want to read about that right now. You know, it's, it's, it's strongly in here just as a warning for you. But I do feel like that is so necessary to our character's development and her forward progress with her story. Like, what she does, is everything is dependent on that moment when her mother passed away. It throws her into this sequence of events that lead her to this house that she has inherited from this other woman. She's like a long-lost relative, and it's the house on Watch Hill, which is this giant mansion that is just creepy as all get out. It's not run down, but there's something malevolent about that house that you just want to avoid. But it is the height of grandeur. There is just nothing about that house that is not over the top and luxurious. So our heroine inherits this, and there are a set of rules that she has to follow to be able to fully inherit not only the house, but also a big fortune. Like, if she meets all the requirements over the course of three years, she will be so wealthy that she will never have to worry about money again. And coming from the destitution that she did, you can see how that would appeal to her so greatly. Also, the concept of having lost her mother and now having no one and then being thrust into the situation of, I have relatives I didn't know about, you know? The whole concept of her looking for family and trying to find connection is very strong in here. So this had great creepy vibes, a really strong mystery, great characters. Like, I had a great time with this. I really, really did. So I will say that, you know, very much like her Fever series, this starts with a potential love interest, but there's very little romance in this one. So I'm assuming it's going to go the same course as her Fever series, where, like, we do end up with a romance, but it's several books down the line. But the story itself, the characters, solid. Five stars. Really fantastic. Honestly, like, that's a good one. Okay, and then the last book that I read is Mad Love by Willow Astor. So this is a contemporary romance. This is a single dad romance. And this was beautiful. I gave this five stars. I really enjoyed this. I wasn't quite sure how I would feel about this because I don't typically love like football type of romances just because I feel like a lot of times they can lean into the jock stereotype, which is just kind of not super fun to, for me to read. But this one was really great. And I think the hero was very multifaceted and just a wonderful guy, right? So our heroine is sisters, with, her sister has a baby with this very famous football star and she has kept that a secret from him so he doesn't know that he has this son. One day he gets a call from the hospital saying, are you the dad of so-and-so? And he's like, no, I don't have a kid. And they're like, well, you're on the birth certificate, so you better come down here. So he does. They have a paternity test. And lo and behold, he actually is the dad of this baby. And he's a little bit, obviously, um, struck dumb by that. He doesn't really know what to think. Our heroine is at the hospital as well because she's obviously there for her sister who has passed away in this accident. But she's there also because she has played such a huge role in this baby's life. She's kind of been like a second mother to him, watching him when her sister couldn't. And so she's kind of trying to still stay in this baby's life, even though she knows, like, she's a waitress, she doesn't have the money or the fame or the pull that our hero does. And he, for his part, the hero, doesn't want to just push her off to the side. He really sort of accepts her with open arms and it's like, I know you're a big part in my son's life. I just barely met him. I want you to continue to be a part of his life. So he sets her up in his house with a room and everything and they sort of end up raising this baby together. And that's of course how they fall in love. This was so sweet. I love, love, love watching when a hero just absolutely adores being a dad and from the get-go is ready to accept that role and responsibility. And I, I loved that part of this. I loved how he respected our heroine. I loved their sweet, soft descent into love. This romance was just like, like sweet as sugar. It was so precious and just very consuming. I loved their love story. This was, I think this book was really low angst and just sweet. There was very little that was stopping their relationship from being together other than maybe like perceived ideas or the press or things like that. It was just beautiful. I loved it. Gave it five stars. So all right, my friends, there you have it. That is my September wrap up. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you have made it this far, please feel free to leave me any type of Halloween emoji because now it's October and it's spooky season. And I'll see y'all in my next video.